Am I on the air? Do I have everybody's attention now? Do I have everybody's attention now? Don, I got you. Don, I Do I have everybody's Sunday attention night. now? He put them cameras on me, then you must be willing To get that heart touched, this a must-see feeling The news ain't good, then it must be villain So I say it's tag grounded, I don't trust these feelings Spread a crush your nose, and I'm on your air High as next on the cloud, am I in the air? Sunday night's prime time, I flex my better Voltron transform to DX Don, mega and off-scene You probably think I'm nice, cause I flow like a stream To your wireless device, and the smoke full of steam on any given night, how short like a piece of any given slice. Uh, and for the latest and what is best about I, tune in and tune the rest out, Don. You gotta tell them, am I in the clear? Is this thing gone? Am I on the air? On the air. What is going down, everybody? Welcome to another brand new edition of Am I on the Air? I'm your host, Don Mega, and I welcome you to the show. This is your one-stop shop for all the latest and greatest in entertainment news. Tonight, it's season 19, episode 6, and tonight's show is titled... Playing with a Ford and Ferrari on the Midway. Oh yeah, good old agglomeration of lots of movies that we're going to be talking about today. It's been a minute once again, you know. I, I always hate to start off an episode with an apology, basically, for skipping a week. Uh, but I had to skip a week again, man. I am just a, so extremely busy in life uh, right now. And finding the time to do this episode uh, is getting hard. It's just, quite frankly, getting very, very hard. Um, So I got to get it in where I can get it in. But here we are, so we'll catch you up with two weeks worth of entertainment news and television and movies. We're broadcasting live here from the Red Dragons Radio Studios here in lovely Tucson, Arizona on this Monday, November the 18th. Our last episode was November 6th, which was the um, Your Fate is Sealed episode, talking about Terminator, um, which unfortunately really continued to just go down the pipeline at the box office. Nobody went to support Terminator in week two, and it's definitely very sad to see because it was a good, good movie. And uh, it's very unfortunate. It's very unfortunate to see what happened with that one. But we're moving past that. It's been two weeks. I got multiple movie reviews to talk to you about. Um, I want to discuss Disney Plus, which launched also last week. And, of course, everything that went down in the last couple of weeks of entertainment news. So let's just jump right in with our spoiler-free movie reviews. I'm going to start off with Midway. So that was the uh, number one movie two weeks ago. Midway, of course, is the war movie based on the true event. Um, this one here, pretty star-studded, man. Patrick Wilson, Dennis Quaid... Um, Ed Screen, uh, one of the Jonas Brothers, Nick Jonas is in there. Um, God, who am I? Uh, Woody Harrelson, um, Luke Evans, uh, let's see, um, Aaron Eckhart. I mean, just to name a few. It is pretty damn star-studded. It's directed by Roland Emmerich, who did Independence Day and The Day After Tomorrow. He loves doing these big movies. Um... I'm very hit and miss with war movies. Um, Some of them are done really, really well, and I can get into them, and then other ones I just find extremely boring. It's not a genre that I'm pretty quick to dive right into, but midway I enjoyed the trailers and I liked the cast. So I checked it out opening weekend, and um, I really dug it. I actually had a really good time at the theater. I liked the story. I liked the visuals. I liked the way that it played out. Um, the movie gets you right out the gate with an attack on Pearl Harbor and just doesn't slow down after that. Um, it's a really good movie. I mean, if you're even remotely interested in the story of Midway, I don't see why you wouldn't go check this out, especially on a big screen. If you can see it in an IMAX or a prime or anything like that, get it in while you can Midway. Uh, I very, very much enjoyed more than I ever thought I would. 
So um, out of five stars, I would give Midway four out of five. So check it out. My next movie is more of the uh, kid edition of my movie reviews, which is Playing With Fire. Now, Playing With Fire um, is the new movie with John Cena, uh, where he plays the um, a smoke jumper. So not to be confused with a firefighter, but a smoke jumper. Basically a subdivision of firefighters who, you know, dive in headfirst to these uh, fires to try to help control it. And um, you've seen, if you've seen the trailer, you know kind of the loose premise, which is basically he rescues a couple kids in a burning cabin and their parents, uh, they can't get a hold of their parents during this, during a storm. So the kids end up having to stay at the depot for a couple days until the parents can come pick them up. Well, you have uh, John Cena, of course, you have John Leguizamo, you have um, Keegan-Michael Key, and if you didn't notice him, uh, who it was in the trailer, the bald guy who doesn't really speak in the trailer, that's always got an axe in his hands, and yes, his name in the movie is Axe as well, um, that's Tyler Main. and if that name doesn't ring a bell, for those of you that are X-Men fans, he was um, Sabretooth in the first X-Men movie, and he was also Michael Myers in the Rob Zombie ho- Halloween movies. So it was kind of cool to see Tyler Maine. I didn't even recognize him myself at first. Um, but basically, that's it. That's the group that we're dealing with in the movie. And of course, it's, you know, you've seen a movie like this a dozen times where they're the strict firefighters that don't want to deal with the shenanigans of the kids, right? But as the movie goes on, they start to kind of warm up to the kids. And then you see where the story kind of takes you. Um, you know, John Cena's never been the strongest actor. And I'm not going to say this one here turns the page. But you could tell he really gave it his all in this movie and he was really having a good time. And, you know, it's a rite of passage for a wrestler turned actor or bodybuilder turned actor that they have to try to do a movie like this for the kids, right? We had Vin Diesel do it with the pacifier. We had The Rock do it a couple times with Game Plan and Tooth Fairy. Uh, Batista's doing it in an upcoming movie called My Spy. So why wouldn't John Cena have his vehicle and that's playing with fire? Um, I will tell you, I took my daughter to see this. My daughter loved it. Um, after watching the trailers, I was actually pretty embarrassed and I was like, I don't know if I can see this movie. Um, but I went and I supported and I will tell you, I enjoyed this movie way more than I thought I would. This film has a ton of heart. It's a great family film. You know, it's PG. It's just... Good family goodness, you know, the kids are going to love it. It's not horrible for the adults to sit through. And I'll tell you, Keegan-Michael Key really steals the show in this, as always. Uh, Key from Key and Peele, he's just so damn funny. And John Leguizamo is super funny in this as well, too. So having them around John Cena and then just dealing with the kids, which is funny because the oldest daughter uh, from the kids is Negasonic Teenage Warhead from Deadpool. So that was interesting to see her kind of in a different role as well. Overall... I just had a way better time than I thought and my daughter absolutely loved it and with the heart that it had and everything from a kid perspective I don't know how I can't rate this thing any lower than a than a 4 out of 5. Uh, remember my ratings for family films is totally different. I'm not saying this is an amazing movie that you should run out and see. But when you're talking about kids films and just having like a good family time at the movie theaters, that's where this five star rating comes to play. And it definitely deserves four out of five because you're going to have a good time at the theater and walk away going, yeah, that was a lot better than I thought it would be. So very happy to say. Uh, And then that leads us to our newest movie review out of the three, which is going to be Ford versus Ferrari. Um, Ford v Ferrari I should say the official title Matt Damon and uh, Christian Bale in this one here The true story of the race at Le Mans um, Ford actually taking on Ferrari Who had won every year at that point And um, Matt Damon uh, His character being brought in to help design a Ford That can actually win the race And then bringing in Christian Bale as the driver to do it Um I always thought this movie looked really, really good on paper. I didn't know how much I would like it actually sitting through it in the theater. What I'll say about it is it's a it's a really good movie, really good. And I would not be surprised if we see this movie pop up during award season uh, for maybe Best Actor, Best Supporting Actor. The acting from top to bottom is phenomenal in this movie. All the supporting players, all the main players, John Bernthal's in here. Um, you know, it was just really cool to see all the people contributing and everybody just did a phenomenal job. 
Um, it, the movie runs a little long for me. It's over two and a half hours long, so I kind of got bored at a lot of different points throughout the movie that I just wish they had cut stuff out and kind of just trimmed the fat. I know Giggy Pat kind of felt the same way too. Uh, he felt there was a good half hour that could have been taken off. And I tell you, man, if this movie was at the two hour mark, I think I would have loved it. Um, but yeah, so it runs a little long, which kind of pulls me back. Um, but it's a great movie and, um, it's so well done. So hats off to everybody involved, uh, directed, um, by, um, oh my God, I'm spacing his name now. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. The guy who directed Logan, uh, and the Wolverine. So, um, damn it. I'm sorry. I'm spacing it right now and I don't have time to look it up. But, um, you know, it was great to see his direction. He's doing good. He brings everything to this. Um, and yeah, it's a great movie. There should be no hesitation to go see this one in the theater. I saw it in IMAX and it was definitely worth it. So, um, I, after everything said and done, and I really kind of pondered on this one for a couple days, I would give Ford v Ferrari four stars. Um, it's not a typical four st- star movie that I would give. And at one point I almost contemplated doing three and a half. But it's done. It's just made so well and the acting's so good that I just couldn't do three and a half, um, you know. But typically, a four star movie is just like awesome. I can't wait to see it again. This is one of those movies that I don't know how often I would be like, "Ooh, let me sit down and watch this movie again." Um, but that doesn't take away from the one time perspective, which was just great. So uh, check it out. Four out of five stars. So man, we got a lot of four star movies here cranking. Uh, from four stars for Midway, four stars for Playing With Fire, and four stars for Ford V Ferrari. Um, hence, our amazing title of the show here tonight. Once again, it is Playing With a Ford and Ferrari on the Midway. <laughs> oh, God. I love it. So, there's your three big movie reviews coming out the gate. Now, over the weekend, I checked out another movie that was kind of straight to VOD. Uh, So I wanted to kind of shout this one out real fast. It's called Girl on the Third Floor, and it stars CM Punk. Now, if you're a fan of wrestling or UFC, you know who CM Punk is, right? So he's been dabbling in some acting lately, and he did a horror movie where he, you know, him and his wife are getting ready to uh, have a baby, and they they buy this house at a really good rate, because guess what? Anytime you get a house at a good rate, there's something pretty effed up in it, right? So he goes to the house early to get it fixed up. It's definitely a fixer-upper, but man, there's some crazy shit going on in this house. Now, I watched an interview with Punk where he talked about this movie, and it sounded really, really intriguing. And then I watched the trailer, and I thought, hmm, that doesn't look too bad for a VOD kind of movie. I'm going to watch this. So I watched it, and it sucked. It sucked. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I love you, Punk. And welcome back to WWE in the past couple days, too. Um, But, um... It just, it was really bad. The, the visuals were bad. Nothing was really scary. The way it played out was dumb. The payoff in the end was dumb. Um, it just felt very cheap. And it just never did anything, man. So it's unfortunate because I was looking forward to seeing it. So once again, it's called Girl on the Third Floor. It sucks. But if you're a fan of CM Punk and you want to check out a real cheesy kind of horror movie with the house doing some weird shit and some people doing some weird shit... Then check it out. But for me, I can't give it any more than two stars. So two out of five for me on Curl on the Third Floor. Now, last week on November 12th, Disney finally launched their big new streaming service, Disney Plus. Which is something that we've been talking about on this show for over a year now. All the different things that are coming to it. All the Marvel stuff that they're working on. But the service finally launched. And um, a big shout out to Verizon. Because if you're a Verizon customer and you're on an unlimited data plan. You get the first year of Disney Plus for free. That's right, for free. So go check it out. If you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Disney Plus is only $6.99 a month, and man, is it worth it. And there's a lot of bundled promotions out there, too, with Hulu and stuff. So there's no reason you should not be signed up for this thing already. It's got a ton of Marvel movies. It's got all the Pixar movies. It's got Disney movies, Aladdin, Little Mermaid, everything you're looking for is on the streaming service. And everything will eventually be on there, too. Some people are wondering why isn't certain movies like Black Panther or Infinity War on there. Well, that's just because certain deals were in place with like Netflix and different streaming things before Disney Plus was able to grab the rights. 
So once those contracts run out, the stuff will then move to Disney Plus. So if you click on a movie, you might see it says coming soon, you know, May of 2020. Uh, it'll have a release date listed on there if it's something coming down the pipeline. But in the meantime, there's a lot of good stuff on there, man. I mean, you have Avengers Endgame. Uh, Dumbo is already on there, the new live action one. Um, you got a ton of Star Wars stuff on there. Of course, The Mandalorian was day one. Um, all the Star Wars movies are in 4K on Disney Plus, which is just phenomenal because you can't even buy those movies on 4K right now. So that was a cool surprise. With a lot of the movies, they even have features and extras on them, like you're watching a Blu ray. And there's, I mean, when you put on Endgame, there are deleted scenes on Disney Plus that you would not seen anywhere else. I saw some really cool stuff that I was like, man, why is this not on my copy? Because I bought that movie day one and I don't have half that stuff. Um, there's so much you can get lost in the thing forever. And since the acquisition of Fox, you can watch Avatar on it. You can watch uh, X-Men the Animated Series, Spider-Man the Animated Series. There's so much stuff added to the library I mean you literally can just float around For an hour just looking at all the cool stuff That's on there uh, Pixar originals everything uh, But you know Disney Plus did launch With some brand new Original content um, And of course the number one thing Is the Star Wars TV show The Mandalorian So episode 1 dropped on Tuesday When the service dropped And then episode 2 dropped on Friday I have watched the first two episodes and I'll tell you it's a really good show. It's a great show in Star Wars canon. The show takes place after Return of the Jedi, I believe about five or six years after Return of the Jedi. Uh, and obviously before Force Awakens, so it's kind of in that middle spot there. Um, the Mandalorian himself is a bounty hunter and we're just following you know, his adventures as he goes on different bounties. Um, and there's a lot of surprises and twists and turns just in these first couple episodes. I'll be honest, when I watched the first episode, I was not blown away by it. I thought it was really slow. It didn't really do too much. And the show was a lot shorter than I thought it should be. It was about 37 minutes for the first episode. And I was like, eh, I like it. I'll continue to watch it, but I'm not blown away. Episode 2 was so much better. I really got into it with Episode 2. It just felt better. It felt more cohesive. Um, I just really, really dug it. So I'm super on board with it now, as I always was, because I love the trailer for it. And I just can't wait to see where it takes us. I'm just, It's just rough waiting once a week to see this damn show. And the episodes are too damn short. So I hope with uh, Season 2, which they've already started filming... Um, it'll be maybe a little bit longer episodes, maybe fingers crossed, but definitely check out the Mandalorian. If you haven't, uh, they also have a live action lady in the tramp movie on there, which I did not get a chance to watch. So I'll review it once I get a chance to there. And the other new, um, day one streaming movie on there is Noel, which is, um, starring Anna Kendrick with Bill Hader. They play Santa Claus's kids and Bill Hader's supposed to take up the mantle for Santa, but he ends up. Ditching it and uh, Noel's got to save the day So I do want to check that one out as well too But have not had a chance So um, there's so much new content like I said And then you, you got Jeff Goldblum saves the world I think it's called That's new There's a new Dick, uh, Pixar short on there called Float Which I did see and it's super cute And definitely probably make you cry um, And uh, the other Pixar original on there Is Forky Asked a Question Which is Forky from Toy Story And every week there's about a 5 minute short on there About Forky uh, just trying to figure out life Because you know he's a spork That just got put together one day And he's got a lot of questions So super super cute What? <laughs> what? Oh um, So I can't preach it enough Disney Plus is fantastic Check it out There's no reason not to subscribe For just a mere $6.99 a month um, Or get a bundle Or go get Verizon service And get your first year for free So uh, that's what I got for you On Disney Plus I, you know, Like I said, dig around Look for the extras There's so much extra cool stuff That you could watch on there I've been watching a lot of the Spider-Man shorts Of my daughter as well too They're super, super cool Okay with that all stuff being out the way, it's time to get to some news, right? We got two weeks worth of news to get through, so let's get it a-going. Speaking of streaming services, Apple Plus launched their streaming service a couple weeks ago at the beginning of November, and they launched with um, four shows. 
The Morning Show, C, Dickinson, and For All Mankind. Well, Apple's officially renewed all four of those shows for season two, so good on them. Uh, I did sign up for this service, and I finally watched the pilot episode of The Morning Show a couple days ago, and I really liked it. This is... uh, it revolves around like the Me Too movement. Basically, uh, you have Jennifer Aniston and Steve Carell, who are basically hosts on like a morning talk show, like a Today Show, and the news breaks that he has done some sexual uh, things with some people that work at the studio. So he gets fired, and Jennifer Aniston has to kind of go on without him. Um, and then we'll see how Reese Witherspoon kind of factors into it. But um, it was a really good first episode. I can't wait to continue this adventure with this show. Um, and then eventually maybe get to the other shows on Apple Plus. But um, but good to see everything renewed for a season two. John Boyega is set to star in a new Netflix thriller called Rebel Ridge. Daniela Pineda and Justice Smith are re- both returning for Jurassic World 3. So good additions there. Kristen Bell is actually returning to voice Gossip Girl. That's right, in the new HBO Max sequel series. So uh, she did it in the original series, and she's coming back for that one. Paramount Pictures has set some upcoming release dates for another Paranormal Activity movie and another My Little Pony. So there you go, more coming down the pipeline. Alfonso Gomez Reon is set to direct Chris Pine in the new movie News Flash. Shazam! director David F. Sandberg is set to helm the comic book adaptation for the film called The Unsound. That's right, I have not heard of the comic book called The Unsound, maybe Friggins has, and he can let me know about it. But good to see it coming from David F. Sandberg. Vincent D'Onofrio joins Jessica Chastain in the new movie The Eyes of Tammy Faye. Spyglass Films is reviving the Scream franchise for the big screen. That's right, Scream is coming back. Now, no word on if this is going to be any sort of continuation from the original four films, or is this going to be a straight reboot? Is this, you know, what are we doing with it? All we know is they want to bring Scream back, and it looks like it's coming back. So that's what we got there on that. Um, Kevin Feige says that the Loki TV series that is coming to Disney Plus will also tie in to the Doctor Strange sequel. So very interesting there and good to know because we know that the WandaVision show will do the same thing. Um, Game of Thrones and Harry Potter stars are joining Killing Eve Season 3. That's right. Uh, Some actors switching gears on over to Killing Eve. Zoe Zaldana is set to star in Reese Witherspoon's produced movie From Scratch. Taika Waititi is set to direct and write a new FX limited series called Reservation Dogs. So man, this guy is so busy. Taika, Taika. Um, Hopefully he has time to do it before he does Thor. I'd hate to see him drop out of anything. ABC has ordered Suzanne Martin and Hazy Mills comedy called Freedom. Jason Sudeikis and Evangeline Lilly have joined a new thriller called Till Death. Scoop McNary and Wildem Sadler have been cast in the new James Comey series that they're putting together. Just a heads up on The Rise of Skywalker, Carrie Fisher will only have eight minutes of screen time in The Rise of Skywalker, which kind of makes sense. I mean, I don't know how much they could have done with previously filmed footage, so I'm glad to see they did what they could do. Bohemian Rhapsody um, writer Anthony McCartan is going to write the script for the Bee Gees movie. So we know that there was a lot of people kind of doing both projects. So very cool to see there. Um, Looks like The Boys Season 2 is officially wrapped filming and will be debuting uh, later uh, next year in 2020. So can't wait to see The Boys. So excited for that one. If you haven't seen The Boys yet on Amazon Prime, what are you waiting for? You need to check it out. The Stars Network is developing a Weed sequel starring Mary Louise Parker. So she's coming back and we're going to do a Weed sequel series. I'm super excited about that. The first trailer for The Invisible Man dropped and it looks really, really good. So check that out. We also have the first trailer for Soul, which is the new Pixar movie. We have the trailer for Color Out of Space starring Nicolas Cage. It's a new sci-fi movie he's doing. 
Beverly Hills 90210, or should I say BH 90210, is canceled over at Fox after just one season. So this is a bummer. I actually enjoyed this revival series of Beverly Hills 90210. Um, and it was only six episodes, so we didn't get much time to really dig into this show. And I know they were saving a lot of stuff for season two. And now, unfortunately, we're not going to get it. So, yes, it is canceled after just one season. The Good Place star, Darcy Carden, who is just so good in The Good Place, she's set to star in Amazon's upcoming League of Their Own television show that they're going to do. A bunch of FX original shows and movies are going to be coming to Hulu next year in a brand new streaming deal. That's right. Stuff is going to air on Hulu right away thanks to this new deal that FX is doing, which is awesome. American Housewife and Bless This Mess have scored full season orders over at ABC. Congratulations. Tyler Perry is The Oval scores a spinoff series about a religious sex cult over on the BET Plus streaming app. Brothers and Sisters, Rachel Griffiths is set to star in Amazon's upcoming YA drama, The Wilds. FX on Hulu will launch in March and will feature every season of the many originals that aired on FX over the past 17 years. So glad to see all that stuff will be coming to Hulu. That's a big, big win there. Um, And then all their new shows that they're working on is going to have exclusive streaming rights with Hulu as well. And FX will also be producing um, programming for Hulu as well. Um, Their full library of current and classic shows will stream exclusively on Hulu. Theo Rossi, Stranger Things star Sadie Sink and newcomer Kwaku Collins are all set to star in a new coming-of-age drama. Umbrella Academy's Jeremy Slater is set to be the showrunner on the Moon Knight TV series that is coming to Disney+. Showtime's Halo... Yes, based on the video game, is starting to move into production. Damien Belcher, or uh, Bachir, I should say, sorry, has joined George Clooney's Good Morning, Good Night, or Good Morning, Midnight, sorry. Neil Gaiman reveals that plans are already underway for Sandman Season 2. Adam McKay looks to direct uh, meteorite satire called Don't Look Up. Adam Scott is set to star in Ben Stiller's new Apple TV Plus series called Severance. So great. I always love when Adam Scott pops up in anything, so I'm on board with that. Uh, Abby Jacobson looks to be joining Darcy Carden for the League of Their Own show over on Amazon. So great addition there as well. Eli Roth's History of Horror Season 2 is coming to AMC. Hawkeye's Disney Plus series was originally planned as a film. Yes, there was going to be a Hawkeye solo movie, but then decided that they could play it out better and um, it would fit the Disney Plus mold a lot better. So they had to pitch it to Jeremy Renner. He was down and we're moving forward that way. So there you go. Um, John Hitter, who of course is a Napoleon Dynamite dude. Um, he's going to fight Tremors in the upcoming Tremors film because of course they can't stop making these God awful sequels. Uh, Todd Phillips' Joker movie has become the most profitable comic book movie ever. Ever. Enjoy those profits, my friends. Um, going back to Disney Plus, I did want to mention this earlier and then ran right past it. If you're wondering, now I've had a lot of people tell me, how are you watching this on your TV? Well, there's many different ways because I know a lot of people are just watching this stuff on their phone and their tablet. Number one, if you have a smart television, if you have an LG or a Samsung, you should have the option built into the television. I have an LG personally, so I have the Disney Plus app built into my smart TV already. Um, So that was a nice addition. If you don't have a smart TV or you don't have an LG or a Samsung, you could Chromecast. Or I would suggest getting like a Roku or an Amazon Fire Stick. It is available on all of those. If you don't want to do any of that, and maybe you're a gamer, it is available on Xbox and PlayStation as well. So there's many, many different ways that you can get it to stream on your television. So uh, good luck with that. The CW is setting their um, full schedule for later in the year when things like Roswell, New Mexico, Legends of Tomorrow, and the Katie Keene series are going to debut. 
So check that out if you're interested. Blind Spot's shortened final season is going to be held off into the summer of 2020. So that's when you'll see Blind Spot return. Um, I used to watch Blind Spot and I really liked it and then just fell way behind and gave up. So, uh, you know, good to see it's still trekking along. Now, something I'm sad about that will not be trekking along anymore is Fresh Off the Boat. Fresh Off the Boat is one of my favorite comedy sitcoms that's on television these days. And unfortunately, it has been canceled after six seasons. So this current season that's airing every Friday uh, will be its last and will wrap up in the next couple months. Very sad to see Fresh Off the Boat go. (laughs) Makes me so sad. Uh... Obi-Wan Kenobi writer dropped some details about the anticipated series, so you can check that out if you want to learn a little bit more. Um, Pickle Rick writer Jessica Gao is also going to write Marvel She-Hulk, so I'm glad to see that we're moving forward on all of this. Bill Murray is officially confirmed for Ghostbusters 2020 return, so that is awesome. Narcos Mexico's Tinoc Herrera is set to star in the next sequel to The Purge. Kevin Smith is going to host an Arrowverse after show over on the CW during the crossover for Crisis on Infinite Earth. So, great pick. It's awesome to have an after show, and especially with Kevin Smith hosting, makes the most sense at all. Disney Plus and Marvel's Moon Knight series boss teases one hell of a ride coming soon to the network. Uh, Sam Worthington is going to saddle up for a new gritty western called The Last Son of Isaac LeMay. We have your first preview teaser for the Five Night crossover for the Arrowverse Crisis on Infinite Earths. Um, Dr. Sleep bombed at the box office last weekend as Midway took the number one spot when a lot of people thought Dr. Sleep was going to be the number one movie and Midway was going to be number two. They flip-flopped. Uh, very sad to see the disappointing numbers for Dr. Sleep, but I can't complain too much because I have not seen it myself and I do want to see it. So I could just imagine, uh, the people out there that do want to see it and just haven't gotten to it yet. And unfortunately the movie has been labeled as a bomb because of that. Um, it had expect it. Dr. Sleep was expected to win the weekend with a very easy 25 million, but instead opened to only 14. Ouch, 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 ouch. We have the official teaser trailer for The Outsider, which is the new Stephen King-based show that is coming to HBO. Damien Chazelle's Babylon nabs Emma Stone and Brad Pitt for Paramount Pictures. DC's Titan show on the DC Universe has officially been picked up for a third season. I'm super excited about that. I love Titans and season two is getting close to wrapping up and um, can't wait to see season three. Newcomer Jamie Lawson has been cast in Matt Reeves' The Batman movie. We don't know as what, but we know that she's been cast. There you go. Universal's Fast and Furious 9 is officially wrap production, so very cool. Hopefully we'll get a trailer soon. Kevin Feige has also confirmed that Miss Marvel, Moon Knight, She-Hulk will all appear on the big screen. That's right, he says... Don't just think about the big screen people coming to the small screen on Disney+, Plus, but the small screen going back to the big screen as well. They will cross over. So that is super exciting. That's something we've always wanted. Going back to the Netflix shows, right? We were always wondering where Punisher and Daredevil and Luke Cage were going to pop up, and they never did. So it's nice to know now that these new characters that are debuting on Disney+, Plus will eventually make the leap into movies and stuff. So that is awesome. Chris Pratt's new movie, Ghost Draft, is getting a new title. The movie will be now called The Tomorrow War. Uh, And it sounds really, really cool. I can't wait to see a trailer for this thing. So, that is awesome. It's going to be a while since we see a trailer. I think they just started filming. But, um, The Tomorrow War, the concept of it sounds really, really cool. Where they bring back fighters from the past to fight current wars. It's it's very, very unique. And I can see why they originally called it Ghost Draft. <laughs> so, I don't know why they changed it, but uh, they had to change it, I guess. Chris Evans says that a Captain America return is definitely possible under the right circumstances. So, I love that the door is open. That's all I need, baby. Just give me that open door. We have your first trailer for Scoob. That's right, a Scooby-Doo origin story is coming called Scoob. And uh, check it out. It's actually a pretty cute trailer. 
Um, we also have the trailer for Fantasy Island. Oh my god, I love this trailer. A Blumhouse horror version of Fantasy Island. I'm in. I cannot wait to see this thing. Check out the trailer if you've missed it. CBS has also released their mid-season dates for Criminal Minds final season, FBI spinoff, MacGyver, NCIS New Orleans, and everything that's coming and going. So check out their schedule. You, season two, gets a December premiere date over on Netflix. You is one of those shows I heard some great stuff about and I do want to watch it, but never got around to it. And now season two is coming. So there you go. It's on Netflix if you're wondering where it's at. You, season two, coming in December. The Soup, yes, remember that show on E? It's getting a revival, and it's coming in 2020. People's Choice Awards 2019, we do have the winners posted if you're interested. I am not going to take the time to read them down, but check it out if you are interested. We also have an article up with all the movies and TV shows coming to Disney+, Plus, things that are available at launch and things that are coming later. The new host for The Soup will be Jade Cara Prada. That's right. Jade Carapreta, who will take over for Joe McHale, who hosted the show from 2004 to 2015. Um, it'll be coming back with her as the host. Um, that Chris Pratt movie we just talked about, The Tomorrow War, has been given an official release date for December 2020. So awesome. Glad to see this coming out at the end of next year. Juliette Lewis, Grace Van Patten, and Mia Goff are teaming up for a new movie called Mayday. The long-awaited Friends reunion special is in the works over at the new HBO Max streaming service. That's right. Um, now, don't get your hopes up that this is a episode or a show or a revival like a new season. This is probably the six of them sitting in a room at like a, a mock central perk getting asked questions about the show and its legacy. That's all this is, <laughs> okay? So don't get too crazy, because I think people are misinterpreting this news as they're getting back together for another season. They're they're not. It's not that kind of reunion. It's just like an actual reunion show of like, hey, everybody, here's Jennifer Aniston and friends. All right. The company Worldwide XR, which we talked about on last week's show that they're doing a movie with James Dean, bringing him back from the dead as a as a... Um, you know, hologram. They're saying that they have plans to bring more legends back. That's right. Yeah, I don't know if that's a good idea. I'm just going to leave that one there. Paul Thomas Anderson is set to film the 1970s high school movie. That's right. His next project will be an untitled high school movie set in the 70s. The live action Little Mermaid has officially cast Jonah Howard King as Prince Eric. So now we finally know who the hell is going to be Prince Eric in the upcoming Little Mermaid. And it's this guy. I only know this guy from the movie A Dog's Way Home, which made my daughter so emotional. I've never seen her cry or be invested into a movie as much as A Dog's Way Home. Uh, He was the dog owner in that movie. So congratulations to him and joining Little Mermaid. We have your first teaser trailer for the Mad About You revival series. HBO Max is developing an anthology series called Point Horror. Harley Quinn has a new trailer. Her animated series is coming at the end of the month to the DC Universe. Disney Plus Hawkeye concept art is revealed in first look at the costumes. There's actually a really cool documentary on, if you go to the Marvel section on Disney Plus, that talks about the future of the MCU And they talk about all of the Disney Plus series that are coming. And they show some concept art and sketches and stuff. And it's really cool to see. So it's about, I think it's only about 7 or 8 minutes. But check it out. It's definitely worth the time to see all the stuff that they're putting together for Disney Plus. Uh, The new Sonic the Hedgehog trailer dropped. And he does look way better. I'm glad that they took the time to revamp this. In the trailer I thought was funnier too than the first trailer. So it feels... Like, there's more energy to this project, so I'm glad to see that they took the time. Brendan Gleeson is in talks to jo- join Joel, McCo- uh, Joel Cohen's Macbeth. The solo Spider-Man movies will not air on Disney+. Plus, and we're talking about Homecoming and Far From Home. Since Spider-Man is involved in the MCU, a lot of people assume that the two Spider-Man movies would be involved. Uh, but remember, those are Sony, so they're not going to be... <laughs> 
excuse me, they are not going to be involved on the Disney service because they're not Disney movies. So at this point, they are not going to air on Disney Plus, and I don't think ever will they because Disney is only going to stream stuff that they own. So I don't see it happening. But for those of you wondering where the two Spider-Man movies are, they will not be on Disney Plus. Ricky Gervais is set to host the 77th Golden Globes for, quote, the very last time. We've heard this before, but glad to see Ricky coming back. Um, Veronica Mars update. There's no current plans for a season five over on Hulu, so that's just going to be where it is. SNL alum Will Ferrell is set to return to host SNL in November. So very happy to hear that Will Ferrell will be back in the next couple weeks. I love when he hosts. It's going to be awesome. Uh, is Days of Our Lives over? I don't know, but the long-running soap opera, uh, supposedly everybody's contract was let go last week. So we'll see. Some of the actors on the show are saying, don't worry, we're not going anywhere. But seems pretty odd that everybody's contract was released. But that's all we know at this point. We have your first look at the new Netflix bio series, Selena. That's right, Selena the series. See Christian Serratos as the iconic singer. Disney Plus also made a change to the first Star Wars movie. That's right, who shot first? We don't know because the season was changed once again. So thanks a lot, Disney Plus. Check it out for yourself. I won't spoil what happened. Andy Serkis is officially confirmed as Alfred in the Batman movie. So we knew he was in negotiations and now it's locked in. So very, very cool. Mark Wahlberg is also in talks, he's in final discussions, to join the Uncharted movie. That's right, based on the video game, he's in talks to play Sully uh, in the um, Spider-Man, um, Tom, <laughs> Tom, uh, Tom, <laughs> Tom Holland, Tom Holland, Jesus Christ. And the Tom Holland Uncharted movie, um, Mark Wahlberg will be playing uh, Sully with alongside him in the upcoming movie, so that's awesome. Blumhouse's upcoming Black Christmas remake is earning a PG-13 rating, which is pissing everybody off, so that sucks. Amazon has officially greenlit the Peripheral series from the Westworld creators. The Russo brothers are set to produce a Marvel vs. DC documentary series for Quibi. And Netflix has officially renewed The Witcher ahead of its premiere. That's right, long before The Witcher even debuts. We know that it'll be back for season two. So thanks a lot, Netflix, for the heads up. I'm glad to see the faith in the Witcher series. All right, Nickelodeon is partnering with Netflix for a multi-year film and series deal. So now that we got Disney+, Plus, you can see companies like Netflix and probably Hulu and some of the other ones are going to be reaching out to different studios to be like, hey, let's work together exclusively so we have some cool stuff to do. We have the first trailer for Seaberg. Check it out, new Kristen Stewart movie. Quentin Tarantino says he may tackle a play, a TV series, maybe even a book before he does his final film. Three more Has Fallen films, along with a spin-off TV series, is on the way. So, some of you might be saying a Has Fallen film. What you talking about? I'm talking about the Gerard Butler Trilogy of Olympus Has Fallen, London Has Fallen, and Angel Has Fallen, right? They've done pretty damn well for themselves with this franchise, so supposedly the studio is saying they want three more films, which is kind of crazy with how the last one ended, to do three more, and that they also want to do a spin-off TV series, so I'd be curious to see what that would actually entail, because it probably wouldn't be the Gerard Butler character, but um, hey, I love these movies, Three sounds like a stretch. I don't know if we need six films in the Has Fallen uh, saga, but that's supposedly what's working up. Sarah Michelle Gellar is going to lead a new limited series called Sometimes I Lie over on Fox. Congratulations once again to Disney+, Plus, which got 10 million subscribers in just 24 hours. That's right, in the first day of its service, 10 million subscribers. Phenomenal. We have the brand new poster and trailer for the new Ben Affleck movie, The Way Back, which looks really, really good. So check that out if you haven't seen it. Phenomenal. The Rock has finally announced, finally, um, (laughs) his Black Adam movie is coming. Remember Black Adam? The Shazam bad guy that The Rock said he was going to be about 10 years ago? We finally have a release date. 
uh, Black Adam will hit theaters on 12, 22, 21. That's right. 2021, December 22nd, we will get the Black Adam movie. Super excited. Glad to hear they're going to start filming it later this year and that it has a release date. It's finally coming. Black Adam. Thank you, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. John Favreau says he wants another Star Wars holiday special. <laughs> so we'll see if he ends up getting that. Phil Lord and Chris Miller are acquiring the original idea from author Andy Weir. Lil Rail Howery, Jacob Elordi, and more are joining Ben Affleck's new movie, Deep Water. Brooklyn Nine-Nine has been renewed for an eighth season over on NBC. Very happy to hear about this. Love Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Yes, very excited. Uh, Regina Hall is set to star in Amazon Studios' new supernatural drama called Master. Patrick Wilson is confirming that he will return for Aquaman 2. Eddie Murphy's next film will be Beverly Hills Cop 4, as we already knew. But now we know that the movie is coming to Netflix. So that's pretty cool. An exclusive Netflix film. So Beverly Hills Cop 4 with Eddie Murphy coming to Netflix. Spike Lee is set to direct Legendary's Prince of Cats adaptation. A Mandalorian movie could happen. That's right. There's people over there behind Disney are saying, damn, this show is doing some pretty good work. Maybe we should do a spinoff movie. So we'll see what happens with that. They'll probably just leave it as a TV show. But no, they're they're tossing the darts around on that one. Ryan Murphy says he wants all his fan favorite actors back for American uh, American Horror Story Season 10. He wants everybody to return. We'll see if he gets what he wishes. We have the new Spongebob movie trailer. That's right, the Spongebob movie Sponge on the Run. You can check out that trailer. Uh, Spike Lee also going to direct a hip-hop version of Romeo and Juliet. Okay. We have the second trailer for Trolls World Tour, which looks pretty damn cute. My daughter loves the Trolls movie. We also have a new trailer for Six Underground, which invites you to visit Italy. And I cannot wait for Six Underground, which comes out next month on Netflix. Amazon's Goliath has been renewed for a final season. So there you go. A fourth and final season for Goliath over on Amazon Prime. Congratulations to Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Biggest game of the year. Best selling game of 2019. Um, Rosa Salazar. And um, sorry. The weird goofy dude from The Good Place. And uh, Kathleen Keener are all signed up for a new movie called Brand new cherry flavor. There you go. Disney is uh, setting a release date in 2020, the end of 2020 for The Last Duel. And now Kingsman, The King's Man, which is the Kingsman prequel, was supposed to come out in February. And now they've officially pushed it all the way back to September of 2020. Damn, long pushback there for that. Disney says they plan to fix the Simpsons aspect ratio in 2020. Some people have been complaining about how that looks on Disney Plus, so they will take care of that. John Woo says Lupita Nyong'o will no longer star in his killer remake. Her schedule is just too busy and she had to move on that. Bill Murray is joining Peter Farrelly's new Quibi comedy series called The Now. Colin Javaro will get a story credit on Star Wars The uh, The Rise of Skywalker. Five more mystery MCU movie dates have been given. That's right, Disney has slated five more films in the MCU with dates, but they're mystery films. We don't know what they will be, but they're anywhere, everywhere from 2023 to 2025. So we'll just have to wait and see what fills those slots. Sofia DiMartino has joined the cast of Marvel's Loki series over on Disney+. Plus. Legendary Television is developing a Sin, Se- Sin City TV series. Nicolas Cage is set to play Nicolas Cage in the upcoming film, The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. That's right, you heard me correct. Nicolas Cage will play Nicolas Cage in this upcoming movie. He'll, it's kind of a satire on his own life, and he will play himself, and this sounds phenomenal. So there you go. Cage on Cage. Let's get in the cage. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. Congratulations to Joker, which this past weekend passed the $1 billion mark. That's right, $1 billion. I can't believe it. A film that cost $60 million just crossed the billion-dollar threshold for a Joker movie. Wow. Congratulations. 
Robert Downey Jr. will be returning to voice Iron Man once again in the upcoming Disney Plus animated series What If, which is real no shocker. They had already announced that all the MCU stars will come back to voice their characters if they're used in this cartoon. So kind of makes sense, but good to hear. Impeachment, which will be the new season of American Crime Story, has just cast Clive Owen as Bill Clinton. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Uh, So that'll be interesting to see. Um, Todd Phillips is open to a Joker sequel, but only under certain circumstances. So I'll let you figure that out on your own. Varsity Blues series has been ordered over at Quibi from writer Tripper Clancy. Filming has officially begun on the Venom sequel, so very glad to hear about that. Gary Oldman is set to star in Apple TV Plus's new spy drama series, Slow Horses. Ty Sheridan is set to star in Quibi's new survival thriller called, it's a new series called Wireless. Hawaii Five-0 and the Magnum P.I. two-part crossover officially set for January. It's about damn time. I've watched both these shows. They both take place on Oahu in Hawaii. How have they never crossed paths? Finally, this January, we will see the crossover that was meant to be from day one. Eight, Hawaii Five-0 and Magnum P.I. The Flash's Sue Durbin has been found. Natalie Dreyfus has landed a recurring role. Um, give me one second here. Uh, over the weekend, Charlie's Angels came out and bombed. It was another bomb in a row uh, after Dr. Sleep. It only made $8 million. Um Which is very, very rough for a movie like Charlie's Angels. Cost a good amount. 8.6 mil, crashing and burning. The um, third high-profile reboot or sequel in a row to bomb after Terminator Dark Fate and Doctor Sleep. Um, Justice League, hashtag, release the Snyder Cut, started trending yesterday. And um, for good, good reasoning, we're trying to get this damn thing released. Zack Snyder is still claiming that there is a final, re, uh, final completed version of Justice League that he did. And obviously that is not the version that we saw in theaters. Now for a while it was just Jason Momoa. Jason Momoa was always coming out and saying, Hashtag release the Snyder Cut. Jason Momoa claims to have seen this version of the film. And he loves it and says this is the version everybody should have saw. And then Ray Fisher, who plays Cyborg, he he also, same thing. He's seen it, he loves it, says release it. And yesterday we saw the tweets from Momoa and from Ray Fisher. And then around 1 o'clock yesterday, Gal Gadot herself tweeted out, hashtag release the Snyder Cut. So now Wonder Woman's asking for it. Huh, interesting. And then a couple hours after that, the ever-elusive Ben Affleck. Tweeted for the first time in a while Hashtag release the Snyder Cut And I'm like what? And then Zack Snyder himself piggybacked on Gal Gadot's tweet And said hey the Amazon princess can't be wrong Release the Snyder Cut And then piggybacked on Ben Affleck's Hey Batman can't be wrong Release the Snyder Cut So yes everybody is in support of this Snyder Cut of Justice League. This has been going around now for about 24 hours on Twitter. It's the number one trending thing. All these celebrities are chiming in. People in the studio industry. Everybody's asking for it. We've got like a million people out there being like. Hashtag release the Snyder Cut. And I'm one of them. I tweeted it right away myself. I like Justice League. I like the movie that we got. I like the DCEU. But man. I want to see the Zack Snyder vision. I want to see the vision that did not get tempered with. The vision that was literally taking us on this com- Extra journey from Man of Steel to Batman v Superman to Justice League. I wanted to see that. And I want to see it. Now, rumors have it, as we all know, Warner Brothers is launching their own streaming service this May called HBO Max. Now, a lot of people are assuming that this is to gain some traction and then the big announcement will happen. Hey, when HBO Max launches... You can see the Justice League Snyder Cut exclusively on HBO Max. You know, maybe a limited theatrical event. If this is the case, sign me the hell up. I'm already going to sign up for HBO Max, but man, I will sign up for two years in advance right now. You give me the Snyder Cut. So I want to see this thing bad. It's really cool to see all the actors from the movie support Zack Snyder, support his vision to, to release that hashtag. 
So thank you Ben, thank you Gal, thank you Jason Momoa, thank you um, Ray Fisher Henry Cavill, Henry Cavill is not on Twitter so I have not seen it from him yet Maybe he'll do it on Instagram uh, And I, I don't know if uh, Ezra Miller is on social media or not So for those of you wondering where the other guys are I think that's the reason why we haven't seen anything from them yet but give it to me, man. Give it to me. Hashtag release the Snyder Cut. I should name this episode hashtag release the Snyder Cut. And then every day when I promoted it, that hashtag would be getting, getting out there. All right, moving along. Patrick Wilson says he is open to returning for Insidious 5. No, Patrick Wilson, stop it. You don't need to come back for Insidious 5. We don't need an Insidious 5. Cut the shit. Russell Crowe has a new movie called The Georgetown Project and has just added Sam Worthington and Daniel Hyde Pierce to the cast. Uh, We have the new trailer for Spies in Disguise. You can check that out. My daughter's looking so forward to that film. Vanessa Beyer, who uh, used to be on SNL, she has a new comedy called Big Deal, which just scored a series order over at Showtime. Tyler Posey and Vin Diesel's daughter, Samise Diesel, is set to star in Netflix's Fast and Furious, the animated series. So very cool there. Um, Sense8 star Jamie Clayton has joined the cast of Roswell, New Mexico for season two. Um, Nick Cannon, he has a syndicated talk show that has just been cleared for launch on the Fox network. So very cool there um, for... Him and Fox. And breaking news right now, I just literally found this out. It was a good thing I looked at my feed, or this would have had to wait till next week. Marvel's The Runaways, which is a Hulu show. Season 3 is coming out in December. As just We've just been told it will be the final season. So The Runaways has been cancelled, and uh, Season 3 will wrap things up. So, uh, bummed to hear, because we know we just lost Cloak and Dagger. Hey, J.V. Lewis, Tandy! Tandy, Tandy, come on, Tandy, we gotta save the runaways, Tandy <laughs> uh, We know we lost Cloak and Dagger, and you know, it was a bummer And we know Cloak and Dagger's gonna be in this third season of the runaways So I was like, cool, maybe it'll be some backdoor pilot Maybe Hulu will pick up Cloak and Dagger Well, probably not no more, because now that Runaways is being cancelled It leads me to believe that this is going to be pretty much said and done For both Cloak and Dagger and Runaways Which is a bummer Um, You know, I'm starting to get the feeling now That Kevin Feige is going to be a little bit more hands-on with the TV shows That he doesn't want a bunch of these other Marvel TV shows Floating around on all these different streaming services and networks That he does not have control over Because he's going to want everything to connect, right? It's all about the bigger universe And if everything's all over the place We can't connect the dots So... Either that or maybe they want to cancel it and bring it to Disney Plus Because I did notice season 1 of The Runaways is actually on Disney Plus So that was an interesting surprise Uh, Not season 2, but just season 1 So you never know, maybe we will get something like that down the road But for now, R.I.P. Runaways, we go into season 3 knowing it will be its last And that, my friends, wraps up our news of the last two weeks. We're right around that sweet hour mark, as I thought. So here we go. Let's do some release dates and box office. Coming out on Blu-ray and DVD tomorrow will be Dora and the Lost City of Gold and Blinded by the Light. And then in theaters this Friday will be Frozen 2, 21 Bridges, and A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. So um, everybody's wondering, am I going to see Frozen 2? You know what's funny is my daughter actually has no desire to see this movie She has not liked the trailers Even though she's a fan of Frozen 1 She's just like, meh (laughs) Which it's her birthday Wednesday So we thought we'd take her for her birthday this weekend And she could care less So I don't know if we'll see Frozen 2 We'll have to see Um, 21 Bridges I would like to see It might be next week though Because this Friday I will be going to see a early screening of Knives Out, the new Ryan Johnson who done it. So I'm looking forward to seeing Knives Out. So since I'm seeing that a week early, that kind of blends in with where we would have seen 21 Bridges. So I'll have to find another time for that one. And here's a weekend box office. Coming in at number 10, it's Harriet with 4.8 mil. Number 9 is Maleficent, Mistress of Evil with 5.2. Number 8 is Joker with 5.6. Number 7 is The Good Liar with 5.7. Number 6 is Doctor Sleep with 6.2. Number 5 is Last Christmas with 6.7 Number 4 is Playing with Fire with 8.6 Number 2, or sorry, number 3 is Charlie's Angels with 8.6 
Um, almost getting beat by playing with fire in its second week. Number two is Midway with 8.8. And your number one movie is Ford v. Ferrari with $31 million. Nice debut there for that film. That'll do it for me, ladies and gentlemen, on this Monday, November the 18th. Thank you for getting caught up with me. Um, next week, whew, we'll probably do the new episode on Tuesday. I plan to probably be out of town for work. So as always, I'll probably broadcast from the Best Western Studios up in Northern Arizona. And we'll drop an episode uh, on Tuesday. So just a kind of heads up there on programming. And then, of course, next week we got Thanksgiving and everything. So it's going to be a busy one. But hey, I hope you all have a great week this week. Let's do some shout outs. Our official webpage is amiontheair.com. Um, of course, you can like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash amiontheair. You can follow me on Twitter at amiontheair. Uh, follow me directly on Twitter at DXDonMega. Uh, follow me on Stardust. Stardust is an app that does 30 second mini video reviews for TV, movies, trailers. Follow me. I'll follow you back. It's a great, great app to have. It's Stardust. Get it? Follow me. Follow me on Stardust. It's simply Don Mega, D O N M E G A. Uh, what else we got? You can get us on Apple Podcast. If Apple Podcast ain't your thing, you can get us on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, Stitcher, TuneIn, um, Google Podcasts, Google Play Music. We're all over the interwebs on pretty much any platform you can think of. TuneIn. Um, outside of that, we are also on Instagram and YouTube. Just simply search Am I on the Air? And of course, our great affiliates at RedDragonsRadio.com. That's RedDragonsRadio.com. Follow on Twitter at RedDragonsRadio, all one word. That'll do it for me. Once again, I hope you all have a great week. Thank you for chilling with me for this hour as we got caught up in all the latest and greatest and everything going on out there in entertainment news. I hope everyone has a great time with family, friends, everything. Happy birthday to my baby girl this Wednesday, Aria. She turns the big six. I love you so much, baby girl. And can't wait to uh, celebrate with you this Wednesday and this weekend. And thank you for being a part of my life. Because you are the greatest thing that ever happened to me. So, I hope you all have an amazing week. And until next time, take care of yourselves and each other. Peace! Bye, everybody! Red Dragon!